How you doing guys? Today, starting the installation and reassembly of the little mule with the gear reduction steering. The first thing I decided to do is mount or get ready to mount the actual gear reduction uh, steering shaft stand, if you want to call it that. Essentially pretty simple. Uh, on this tractor, as I indicated in my earlier video, the stand is located with the rear bolts in line with the original holes on the frame. Oops, sorry. This is where the original um, steering gear for the 857 went. So I had to drill a set of holes in the front or just forward of them for these front holes. Pretty simple. Just lined it up. Just lined it up, dropped a couple bolts in the rear holes, took a center punch, center punched these holes, then got my hand drill, drilled the two holes, uh, three eighths in diameter, and as you can tell, everything fairly lines up real nice. Lines up nice enough where I could drop the bolts in and tighten it in. Now with that, my next step is to put the new ax front axle that I machined, and I'll show you that in just a second and the bigger 520 spindles in place. With the front axle mounted in the milling machine, I've started boring the 7 8 hole. Eventually I'll bore it out to one inch, which I've completed on this side. The hole's not perfect, um, but it's close enough. The spindle fits real good, so I'll go ahead and continue Boring this out 7 8 and then 1 inch. And we should be all set to mount those 520 spindles. As you saw, I brought the front axle over to my buddy's machine shop and I bored it out. This was originally um, three quarter inch, this hole on either side uh, for the original style uh, 857 uh, spindles, which is three quarters. Actually, I think I have a pair of spindles. I do. I have an extra pair of spindles right here. Here they are right here. This is the spindle that was originally on the 857 is this style spindle and I'm just gonna put it right there on the floor hopefully we can get a double shot oh yeah there you go so you can see the difference we're increasing it to a one inch diameter um, instead of just having standard roller bearings on the uh, 857 we're going to the one inch tapered roller bearings kind of like a trailer which was a five which was a 520 style uh, is a 520 uh, spindle. Um, everything worked out pretty well. I mean, there is a little bit of play in the um, in the one inch, so the, the spindle moves a little bit, um, but really nothing that I'm going to worry about. Nothing you would feel in the steering itself. One of the big things that's a that is a diff that is a difference. Sorry, um, is the actual spindle or the tie rod point. It's a little bit. You know, it's just a touch forward on the 857 spindle compared to the 520. So when I put the uh, steering bar in here, I'll make uh, an adjustment on the mount placement where I weld that mount on so that my tie rods are nice and straight. Also, I'm going to want to make sure that it's it's level, they're level or parallel to the ground. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original 520 center bar and I'm going to cut the the sun gear off it and the front mount for the tie rods and cut that off because it's too long. So let me get the cutting and we'll get this back in the tractor so we can take a look at how that's going to work. Before I get to cutting I wanted to just kind of show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually cut it right here to get this sun gear piece off this three quarter inch shaft. I'm probably going to cut this one somewhere right around in here only because I don't need this whole piece from here to here. And this is the mount for the tie rods. And to be honest with you, it's way too long and it's way too wide. 
So I'm going to have to make like another cut somewhere right around here and then re-drill the holes so that way those tie rods are nice and straight because the 857 obviously is a lot smaller than the original 520. So with that, I'm going to start cutting, get these parts off, and then we'll get them somewhat lined up in the tractor to take a look at how it's all going to kind of fit together. So after a whole bunch of cutting and some grinding, I finally got this thing apart. Um, in my naive thinking, I thought that this little thing right here was an indicator that this gear, okay, and this piece from here all the way to the end, which included this, was basically a tube that was slid onto a three-quarter inch piece of bar stock. This is three-quarter inch. This is the end that goes into the steering uh, tower. This is the end that goes into the frame, but I was wrong. This is actually a piece of one inch bar stock that they machined down to three quarter right here. So that way the foot peg bar can, it'll clear the foot peg bar and they machined this end of it in order to fit into the steering tower. And then they machined this end of it to three quarter inch so that would fit into the frame. So they wouldn't have to modify the frame of the tractor that much. To me, this is like totally craziness and really indicative of why in the mid, mid to end of 90s, you know, wheel horse just couldn't keep up with the Chinese garden tractors or the Chinese tractors that were being dumped on the market because this cost them, you know, $100 a piece to make, which was completely ridiculous. Uh, if they had just used a piece of three quarter inch bar stock, welded the gear, welded that on and be done with it, you know, that would have saved costs. And this is not any stronger than a piece of three quarter inch bar stock because number one, you neck it down to get it into the frame, you neck it down to get it into the steering block, and then you basically, you know, castrate it right here in the center to make the clearance for the foot peg bar. Completely ridiculous, but whatever. Um, I took the hacksaw, cut the weld, and then was able to slide this off that three-quarter inch bar stock. So now that we can, I'm not using this one, but this is just a piece of three-quarter inch bar. This slides right on, no issue, and I can just make my adjustments where I want it to be. As well as the gear. Now, the gear was interesting because the weld that was holding this gear on was extremely hard. Uh, my hacksaw wouldn't even wouldn't even think about uh, cutting into it. So what I did was I cut a few inches, uh, like just on the outside of the weld, and then took it out, took it over to my bench grinder and ground the weld down until, as you can see, I just started to poke the three quarter inch end of the of the bar out, and then I just whacked it with a hammer, a ball peen hammer, to knock it out of the gear. And again, this fits super nice onto. A piece of three quarter inch bar stock because that's all I'm going to do. I already bought a new piece of bar stock from Tractor Supply. I'm going to cut it to a rough length, fit it into the tractor, and then start planning out where the gear is going to go and where the uh, tie rod ends are going to go. All right, guys, I think I'm going to end this video right here. Uh, in the next video, we'll be doing some layout and some tack welding, and we'll get that lower bar into place and start working on those tie rods. All right, thank you very much. Please subscribe, please like, share the video if you don't mind. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. As always, have a great day.